Today I'm going to be trying out a reusable molding compound made with gelatin. One of my supporters shared a video with me uh, from Jenner Custom Toys. I will include that link in the description showing how to make a mold out of gelatin. I have a few hesitations with this, but at the same time, it's very affordable and is worth a try, especially if you're gonna be doing prototyping with 3D printed resins. And all you need to do is mix your unflavored gelatin with some glycerin and some water. And that's all you need to make this. It's very simple. So let's get started. I'm using about half of the recipe that he gave. I'm gonna start with my glycerin and then mixing my gelatin in after that. I found that if you do it that way first, you're less likely to have the clumps of the gelatin. Just make sure in this case, I'm using two ounces of gelatin for six ounces of my glycerin and then my water to match. So I'm going to take this, put my gelatin in, and then I'm gonna just use a chopstick to mix it up until all of the gelatin is dissolved into the glycerin, which is a little bit thicker. It's probably the thickest part of this whole compound. After that's all mixed up, I will then add the cold water and mix it in. At that point, what really activates it is the heat, the hot water, that's what makes it reusable. You can just put it in a microwave and remelt it down and reuse it. So before I do that, I'm going to take my 3D printed dice that I didn't even sand or anything just to test it out to see how it does with cure inhibition, which should be none. It should work just fine as it is gelatin. I'm going back to the old way of doing it with the putty in a cup. And in this case, instead of a toothpick, it's a chopstick because it's such a big die. This compound is much thinner than your typical silicone. So I wouldn't be able to use my 3D printed cups because they would just leak out. Whereas with the silicone, it's thick enough that it would fill in. But in this case, this is how we've got to do it. And also because we're going to have to cut the mold at least halfway, if not farther down, just because gelatin rips a lot easier than silicone. So once I have that set and ready, I go ahead and add the hot water to finish making my compound. And once I'm done mixing this, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the mold. When he makes it, he lets it set first and then heats it up again before making the mold, which makes sense after I do this and show you. There's so many bubbles in this, it's very frothy. In, no matter, even after using it a couple times, there's a little bit of froth at the top, but that's fine. For this, I just want to test and verify that it will work just fine using a resin master. You want to let your compound cool down a little bit. You don't want it to be super hot when you pour it. I didn't quite have a big enough container. I let mine sit to cool and didn't get to it for a couple days, so it actually deformed a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, I expected it to not be great because of all the bubbles. I just want to make sure that there will be no issues with the resin and the compound. Later uses don't have near as many bubbles, plus I'm going to be putting it into a pressure pot, but I'm going to use the craft knife to cut it out. With all the bubbles in this one, it's very leathery as well as sticky. You don't need to wear gloves, it's all food safe. I just like to wear gloves because I'm used to it and because I don't like the stickiness on my fingers. Ideally with this compound, you'll want to use it soon, so make your mold fill your mold and get it done as soon as you can, and I'll show you why later. Although it takes me a little bit longer to get through this leathery toughness, um, it does work just fine. It takes a little bit to get it to come out, but it is not inhibited in any way by the resin. So that is good, approved, affirmed. And now I'm just going to heat it up so I can use it again. But uh, the container I used wasn't exactly microwavable and it deformed and melted my thing a little bit. So I'm just gonna let that cool down again and then I'm gonna rip it out and then put it back in the first tub before heating it up to be able to use again. So now we're gonna try and make a normal mold and use the pressure pot and see how we do with quality. So I have my stuff, I'm gonna heat it back up and once it's heated up, I'm going to use it to pour it into my new mold. The molding compound that just keeps molding. It's great. Reusability is awesome. 
and it's very affordable, so why not give it a try? Let's see how we do. I try pouring it slowly to try and have the least amount of bubbles, even though I'm going to put it in the pressure pot anyway. Just a good habit. There it is in the pressure pot with the froth on top. And here it is after having been pressurized. It looks like there's bubbles in there, but I think that's just where it has started to separate from the dye. Since I don't want to chance it ripping at all, I'm going to use my cutters and cut open the cup just to get it to come out more easily. And the mold looks pretty good, and you can see it is separating from the dye inside. So I'll use my craft knife to carefully cut down the side. If you pull apart while you push down, it, it comes apart really easily. You don't want to pull apart too hard because it can and very much will rip. So I'm going to carefully cut down about halfway down on both sides so that I can get the die out without ripping it at all. And while I do that, let me just tell you about some really cool people. Supporters! Thank you so much for all that you do for me. It is very much appreciated. You are the wind beneath my wings. If you too would like to support me, go to ko-fi.com forward slash geek happens and just send me a buck or two once, or if you want to sign up for a membership and pay monthly, you'll get access to my 3D models and other goodies for personal use to help you in making dice or other tabletop gaming adventures. If you don't want to make your own dice and you just want some dice, dice cases and towers, miniatures, scenery, or DM or player tools, just head over to 3dmtabletop.com and pick up whatever you want. Now that I have the mold cut, I'm going to very carefully, so as not to rip the gelatin, shimmy the die out as I push from underneath to pop it out until I can grab it and then pull it out. There it is. A very good first mold made out of gelatin. With the first batch, it's nice and clear. The more you use it and reuse it and the more dirt that gets into it, it will darken of course, but this should work well. With the cuts pretty far down the sides, you want to make sure that you line it up correctly. And it does look like it is sticky enough that it will hold itself together. You may, after a few uses, have to use tape. Definitely don't use a rubber band as this stuff is very squishy. It will deform a lot if you try and put a rubber band that's too tight on there. So I mix up some resin, just a little bit, to do this one dye. And I'm going to go ahead and color it with some alcohol ink to see if it works great or if it's just a deception. I only add a little bit because I want it to mostly be transparent. I like that light shimmery color. And then when I pour it in, I'm going to very carefully hold it open. And then as I fill it, I will slowly close it and then fill the reservoir at the top. Once it's full, I make sure that the sides that are cut line up and are pressed together firmly. Again, you could use tape to stabilize it if you wanted to. This is just a test, so I'm not going to worry about it. And with the first batch, it's probably going to stay together pretty well. So that looks nice and full. I'm going to put that in the pressure pot and then let it cure for at least 12 hours. Pop it out the next day, and there we have our deception die. And so now it's just as easy as getting it out of there. Now this is reusable, so if you really don't care, you could just rip the mold apart and throw it in a thing to be made into a new mold, but I'm gonna be careful about it and try and reuse the mold again. So I'm going to very carefully jiggle it until it comes loose from the sides and all of the faces of the die before I separate it more and grab onto the sprue and then just pull that thing out. It's really not that bad, I'm just being extra careful because I really don't want it to rip, but it does rip a little bit as I separate it to get the die out. But it's still usable again if needed. The die looks okay, the only thing is at the top there's these little markings, I don't know if it's from the mold or if it's from the resin, but in any case it should sand out. And if it is a problem with the mold, it's really easy to just make another one. No silicone wasted, or gelatin in this case. So I might as well just show you how easy it is to rip when you're pulling it 
it comes apart pretty easy. I mean, it's gelatin. It's just as expected. I'm going to pull this apart in half, and then I have the idea I could try on the next batch pouring some into this and see if it sticks like silicone. When you have silicone with silicone, it's silicone. It, it doesn't come apart, but maybe with the gelatin, you can separate it and potentially make cap molds if it weren't so fragile. So I pour that and then let it set, and it seems like it's gonna be all one thing, but I am able to actually get it to separate. I have this nice drip on this instance to help get it to pull off, but if that pulls off, I keep working on it, and it does eventually as I roll more than pull, I guess, just kinda peel it, and I'm able to get it to separate and come completely off. One of my worries was that if I pour hot gelatin on the already cooled gelatin that it might deform or melt it. In this case it does not appear to have done anything, but again that comes into play later as I tried also redoing the big die with a bigger container that it would actually fit in. And we'll look at that as soon as we finish with this cap mold section. But I do actually get it to come all the way out, very carefully peeling. So you could potentially do a cap mold without needing extras like the Vaseline or anything that you don't want to have melted back into your compound again later. Possible? Yes. Probable? No. But let's try it anyway. So I poured it into one of my cap molds that I normally make in another container because I knew that it was liquidy, much more so than silicone, so it wouldn't stay in the container, it does actually come apart nicely from the tape. The bad part is, as expected, it does rip very easily when you get your dice out. So if you do anything besides the smaller dice like the D6s, D10s, uh, D8s work great, anything else is just going to rip. But let's move on to the giant dice mold, and this thing is huge. This is much more than I would use with silicone. But the hope is that even though it's so malleable, that it will keep its shape without deforming as much. So here is our new giant dice mold. And we're going to go ahead and use some more of these alcohol inks that are pearlized. And I'm just going to slowly, one pipe at a time, fill this all the way up with various colors, alternating to try and make a really cool dice. Even though it doesn't really matter what it looks like, we're just seeing if this is going to work and keep its shape, as it is a very large cavity in a very malleable gelatin. So after it has been set and put in the pressure pot, I go ahead and slowly work on getting the die out. And it looks cool at first glance, but wait, there's something weird about this. It looks kind of oblong. Oh, and there's this giant divot in the top, and it separated and slid the sides. So whether or not it was the pressure of the pressure pot, the malleability of the gelatin, or perhaps even the heat from the reaction of the resin, it's just not going to work in this case. And it could be true for the smaller die, but it is not noticeable at all. The mold looks fine, it comes together just fine but I'm thinking maybe the thinness also between the reservoir and the top of the die helped it just kind of sink in, but it, it, like I say, it's very soft, very malleable, very easy to deform. And this is it after sitting for a couple of days, and it no longer even closes. It just completely deformed and separated. So in the long run, not going to work as something that you can just make one mold and then keep that mold for weeks or years, you'll want to remake your mold each time you make your dice. But there are a lot of possibilities with this. Where it is food safe, there's nothing stopping you from making a batch, preferably a new one, one that hasn't touched resin, and making chocolate dice. That's up to you, but I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that thumbs up to like this video, subscribe for future videos, and until then, I will see you next time.